giving a synchronous lecture is just like live theater. It happens in real time in front of a real, if only imagined audience, and there are no retakes. So whenever you make a mistake, you have to fix it on the fly, and we hope people have some understanding for us. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through this Zoom lecture. I'm gonna run through it from beginning to end with all the flaws, and only later on are we going to package it up and try to get things a little smoother. I'm Rick Sellens. I've made a lot of videos for my students. Most of them are not polished. Most of them are one take uh, videos and many of them students have found really useful. So I'm going to walk you through some processes of getting set up so you can meet that kind of asynchronous objective too. Uh, I'm using Zoom to record this lecture, and I will start off by getting my keynote slides up. And it's going to take a while to do all of these things because I'm doing them just the way I would if I was having to do a lecture live and wait for applications to start. And now I'm going to share my Zoom screen, and I'm going to choose to share the whole desktop. So now I have the whole desktop shared. I'm still sitting on my couch and you've probably noticed the computer rocking a little bit. It's a lovely day in Kingston and there's beautiful sunshine behind me and I'm mostly in silhouette. So first thing we need to do when we go to give a lecture is try to set the stage a little more appropriately uh, by, by getting our act together and, uh, and getting an appropriate background. So. I'll start uh, my remote and asynchronous presentation about some instructor tips on how to deliver various modalities of engineering instruction by moving over to a desk where I can actually uh, see you and with a little luck you can see me a little better. So I'll plug in my computer so it's got continuous power supply and I'll adjust my screen so that it's Showing me in the video. Get comfortable on my chair. These are all things I'd wind up doing uh, in my presentation in a lecture room. And now I'm ready to talk to you about uh, remote and asynchronous presentation. So I just want to remind you all that this presentation is being recorded. And if you are actually present, then the things that you commit to this presentation may show up in the recording. And I may share that with the other people who are already here who will have seen it anyway. If you want to completely avoid identification, then turn off your camera and send any questions that you have for me in via the chat. When I was putting this together, I was thinking a lot about my MEC 217 course and, and the kind of modalities that I'd be looking at for delivering lectures in that course. And today I'm going to focus on uh, synchronous lecture material, basically giving students an experience similar to the quality that they expect when they show up to a lecture room. Uh, we need to be able to do all of the same things in our lectures that we're used to doing and get all of that information delivered to the students in a manner that's effective and in a manner that allows us to be able to uh, seem interactive, deliver interactivity, and also reduce the reduce the amount of time taken to deliver the material. We've got a bunch of learner interaction modes. The one we're going to concentrate on today is the passive interaction mode. That's when I go to a lecture and mostly the students don't say much of anything, but I can tell they're paying attention because I can see their faces moving around and I can see whether they're awake or asleep. What I want to focus on today is synchronous delivery and recording that delivery so that you can make it available asynchronously to other students. I'm going to start there because it's important that we walk before we try to run. So this particular presentation, I'm going to focus on preparing your remote studio, either at home or on, on campus, if you can do that safely, and setting up the feeds that you want to use in your presentation so that you're a little better prepared than I was sitting on my couch. I'm going to give you an opportunity then to practice recording and switching between feeds. I'm going to show you what that looks like. And ideally, then you're going to make your own recording uh, to provide a synchronous delivery recorded for asynchronous later sharing with students. 
and we'll work on how to modify that in a later version of the uh, uh, or a later presentation. So first off, you need to pick and prepare a computer. Uh, ideally, use a separate computer to support your remote teaching. It's going to be important to protect your privacy because you can never be sure that you haven't forgotten something that shouldn't be on the screen, that shouldn't be visible to students, and that for sure shouldn't get recorded in a permanent video or placed out on a streaming server like YouTube. So ideally, if you can, use a separate computer. A laptop is a really good pick. For most work I do, I like my big desktop with an enormous 27-inch screen. But a laptop is a lot closer in format to what your students are going to be using for their video watching. It's a smaller screen. You need to keep the scale in mind so that when they're displaying a typically uh, H, uh, HD resolution video, that they'll see something that they can actually read on the screen. And that we'll have things that are filling up a large portion of the screen instead of just being off up there in the corner somewhere. Once you've picked your computer, clean and tidy your virtual desktop to reduce distractions, uh, both to yourself and to the students. Install all your usual teaching software, whatever it is you'd normally use in a lecture room to show students stuff, Keynote, Excel, Word, whatever your, your presentation stuff is, uh, plus Zoom, plus any technical software that you use in your course. For instance, I use the Arduino IDE to program microcontrollers. So get all of that stuff installed on your separate teaching computer and get it configured so that the default fonts are, for example, big enough that people can see them when you're programming in the Arduino IDE. If you do that, then your separate computer is going to be better positioned to deliver a good result right when you turn it on, rather than having to remember to reconfigure your desktop to a, a mode that works better for recording a Zoom video.